Hello everyone. A really quick recap on automation. I had um, a comment which was very gratefully received um, asking, let me just, sorry, I'm just going to turn that down so I haven't got an echo, asking about automation and how you can use that with an AMP sim inside Cubase. Now, this is the project we looked at in the last video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of the guitar parts. I've just centralized it so it's in the middle of the um, of your ears so it's not panned either to left or right. I'm going to solo him and then I'm just going to press P on here which will set my locators. Put him on a loop and then hopefully we're just going to hear the guitar part. Okay. Now, let me just go to the edit window and I'm going to take Amplitube off and we're going to have a look at this in um, the Cubase amplifier which is called AmpRack. <laughs> forgot it then for a minute. So we're going to load up AmpRack. Now if you want to find AmpRack it's on your inserts and it's under AmpRack there under distortion in the drop down. Okay now the beauty that AmpRack has is it comes free with Cubase, so if you've got a version of Cubase, the chances are you're going to have amp rack. You've got your amplifiers here. I've actually done a video on amp rack, but you've got different cabinets you can choose from. And what they've done, they've chosen them. If you can see from here, the, these, you know, you can tell what sort of amplifiers it's based around. So this is based around a sort of Marshall. But what someone asked me was, can you use automation to bring in? the pedals into amp rack and I'm sure you can so let's have a look so here's amp rack running and say we've got a um we've got a guitar part there but let's say as this guitar builds we want to bring in an overdrive so if we look at um under here under our pre effects because the overdrive generally comes before the amplifier so that's a pre effect um let's see what we've got under overdrives or here we go, we've got an overdrive. Now, what I'll do, I'm going to put the drive on, you know, bring it to about 12 o'clock, bring up the tone a bit, and let's say about bar 9, I want to switch this on. So, this is where your automation comes in. I'm going to put read and write on. So, if you just press write, read comes on automatically because anything you write, Cubase will read it. So, let's just play that. And then at 9, I've just switched it on. Now I'm hoping we'll see that come on on the automation lane. And then at 13, I'll come off. And let's just have a look. So I'll move this down a bit. Yeah, there you go. So with this read and write on, as long as I've got this, I can see this in front of me, I can actually see that that switched itself on. So now, let's try something else. When that switches on now, I'll take it back a bit. When that switches on, how about I try and bring up the drive as well, and hopefully that will make another automation lane. So, I've still got read and write on. It's just switched on. I'm going to bring up my drive. And then it's going to switch off. Okay. And there you go. It's made me another automation lane. So, Although I'm looking specifically at amp rack at the moment, this is great for the more obscure effects because if we drop down on an automation lane, automation track, these are your sort of standard ones and you can go to more, but the easiest way I find it, if you're using a third party plugin or um, something more obscure in Cubase and you want to automate it, so you want to change the parameter as the song progresses, actually physically doing it and then going back to edit later is a much better idea because it creates the automation lane there and it's just there in front of you as you, you press right, it appears. So what we can do with this then, do you remember before we've, um, if we did, you see I was a little bit late on it coming in at nine. I can actually, if I highlight the lane, the on off switch and press Z, remember that makes it much bigger, I could perhaps bring this back then to nine so I know right at the start of bar nine that's going to come in so do you see what I mean by that it's almost the case of once you've created the automation lane you can go back and do the editing so like take for example where this gain increases here you might think it looks a bit messy so I could use in the lasso tool so left click 
over all three, all um, whatever there is, five or six, I don't know. Press delete now. Now you'll get a nice ramp up, and you can even use this feature in Cubase, which is pretty cool. You can actually adjust the curve as he goes up, so that'd be a nice ramp up there for that. So that's one effect, but it doesn't have to stop at one effect. So say at bar nine, I also want to bring in a well, I don't know, let's have a look, a chorus, I'm thinking, but... So we press this little plus sign. Um, OK, let's well, let's do chorus. You, I'll tell you what's cool as well. I'm going to show you that just before the end. OK, so chorus. So I'm going to add a chorus, but I'm not going to switch it on until bar 9 again. I've got read and write, so I'm making sure that's still on. I'll press play. Bar 9. Just put him on. And again, we can change the parameters in there. Let me just drop this down a minute. And here you can see, at bar 9, the chorus is switched on. But let me press Z again on that track. What I'm going to do is bring this back and back, because I was a bit late on that. OK, so if I press Z again, can you see here I've got another automation lane? But if I take this back, I can take right off if I wanted. Can you see they switch on at that point? So that's how you use automation inside of Amp Rack. And it doesn't have to stop with the effects. You can use the read and write to bring up the gain of this of the actual amplifier itself. Or say you wanted the chorus to have more treble and the verse less. Well, you automate that in. It's, it's as simple as, so. let's take it back to, say, bar 7. And say I'm going to ramp up the treble at bar 9 again. So again, make sure I've got right on. Press play. Here he comes. Start to ramp it up. And then say I want to bring it back down for the second part. You can do that. I can take right off if I want, but there's no need at the moment because I want to show you this wah. OK. And there you go. And it even tells you. So it's VST amp rack, and it's the treble, and I've automated it up. The same process applies if I want to tidy that up. I can use the lasso tool by left clicking around on these points. And don't forget you've also got, if you want to curve, change the curve of that, you can do that. So that's how you would use the amplifier. And that will work on anything if you want to switch cabinets, anything at all. As long as you've got that read and write on, you can do it. Now um, one thing I, I might have done a video on this before I think, I can't remember, but on my pre effects one I'd love to use is the wah because it's it's cool to automate a wah because you can get something called an auto wah which depending on the velocity you hit the note the more the wah wah will engage or the more you, the actual seesaw movement will press down so the more treble you'll get but the beauty of using it on an automation on a VST is you can actually use the mouse to control the wah so say at bar 9 I'm going to switch the wire on. I'm going to switch it on just slightly before bar 9, actually. And then I'm going to start doing some mad wah wah on this. OK, so I'm taking it back a bit. I've got read and write on, so I'm making sure that red's still on. I'm going to switch them on just before. And then I'm going to do some wah. And let's have a listen back. So press stop. I'm going to take right off now because I'm not interested in writing any more information. And can you see here, there's my wah wah. So as I was using the mouse to do the wah points, it's created it in there for me. And I can actually, you, if you want to see this, you can take it back, go to amp rack, I can press play. You can see they'll all switch on at a certain point. There you go, they're on. And there's my wah. So that's the actual foot movement of the pedal which is quite cool. And again, you can go back into the automation and change these. One thing to watch out for is, obviously, if you're using loads of automation on just one guitar line, you're going to end up, you're going to, you'll be scrolling around a lot. But don't forget, you can minimize these down. So say once you're happy with the wah and you don't want to see that automation lane anymore because it's more useful to see the actual rest of the track. Remember, so where it says here, the wah, just click on the little minus button and they will disappear for you. The automation will still work but you won't see it so it's much tidier but of course if you want to see it 
you can use the drop down again and you'll see them appear the drop down and also just a real quick one so if you don't want to see them all but you want to see one one point of that so you want to see just the wire can you see here i've made i so i'll do them again let me make this bigger so you can see it so there we go i'm going to use the drop down on guitar one just at the bottom left of the track let's make this bigger and at the moment it's on delay because that was the first thing we we did was it delay oh no it was switching on the overdrive so it's on overdrive sorry we didn't have not used delay <laughs> sorry and then um you see these ones with stars they automatically go to the top anything you've automated will go to the top of our drop down menu and you can see the ones we've used so here you go the last one we used or it wasn't the last one we used but it seems to have worked out that way okay well whatever it doesn't matter is wawa and you've got the on which i don't want to look at i want to look at my pedal motion again so i click on that one and there you go so it's a way you can use you can look at everything you've done on that one automation lane if you want to but of course if you want to see them on different ones remember it's just this little plus drop down button and you'll see them it's anything with a star next to it you can see the automation because the one thing you you know depending on how many if you've got a couple of screens it's great or if you've got a, a big monitor but say you're working on a laptop you can quite easily run into the problem that you're doing a lot of scrolling up and down to see tracks so that's why once you're happy with it consolidate these down folder tracks work really well for that say on guitars as well i do an, i will um do a video on that prob you know probably within the next week or two but that's automation within amp rack but it doesn't have to be limited to amp rack it'll work in anything any third party plugin or anything like we've looked at down here we looked at some automation but if you want to find automation on a more obscure effect or not obscure but something that's not standard and stock like a, a volume on um a track or what comes as you know easily findable if you can't find that parameter really i work like this all the time the best bet is to load up the effect that you want to work on press read and write do a bit of automation and cubase creates the lane and you can see it there and then then you can edit it it's just a quick way of getting um, an automation lane running for you rather than having to create the lane draw it in with a mouse or a fader you can actually just completely create it there with using the effect and then ate, ate it, edit it at a later stage. Okay, good luck with that.